move on to our next speaker, Axel Cortez Cubero, who is a research scientist at CryptoEcon Lab with a background in statistical physics. And he'll be speaking to us today about a gas model for a post-scarcity era. Take it away, Axel. Right, so, okay, so I, everyone hears me okay? Okay, wait. Right, so I, I want to, my goal here is to uh, introduce you a problem that maybe you don't know you have, and then not give you the solution to that problem. But uh, uh, I just want to like introduce the possible space of solutions for this kind of problem, which is, uh, as in short, is like, uh, as I, maybe there's a lot of people focusing on how do we scale the blockchain, make it more powerful, more powerful. But uh, basically to understand what's the, what could be the problems associated with that, or if we want to think maybe not just scale as much as we can, but uh, scale as much as we should, is a question. Uh, so I just, uh, I'll talk a bit about gas in general to, uh, uh, um, so, so yeah, just very briefly, so gas is, um, what I mean by gas is just like a unit of computational effort in the blockchain. So like all these transactions, all the nodes need to validate that it takes effort, everything that is included in the in the blockchain. Right, so so it's a, it is a, the amount of gas that you could have in a in a in every block, right? So it's a, that you could use in every block is precious. Uh, it's a, it's scarce, so there's only uh, you cannot put all you want in there because everyone needs to validate this, right? Uh, so so the point is it's scarce, so it should be uh, optimally used utilized in a sense. So. so the idea is that there should be an optimal block size that you should. So this is like the amount of gas that I can fit, that we can all fit in a block, and we can handle it. Anything more than that, and it's too much for 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 the whole network to to process. Anything less than that, and the network is being utilized, and that's not uh, efficient. For the, and so it should be used better. Uh, so the idea is that uh, so so you should price uh, so so. Uh, so it should be used uh, optimally, and the way that it's done is uh, basically it should be priced at a market clearing price. Right? So the idea is that the amount of uh, what you should pay for a unit of gas should be the old optimal value, such that uh, only the amount of transactions that fit in the block size that you're aiming for can afford this price. Right. So anything else would be priced out. Right. So uh, but so the, the idea is that you want to select only the most valuable transactions to be included on the block. So you move the price until you reach that price that that only this exact block size makes it through the market clearing, clearing price. Yeah. Uh, so this is in a normal like limited blockchain where you have scarce gas, like only this amount of block size available. Uh, right, so the next question is, so how do we, Kind of reach this market clearing price. Uh, uh, there's there's different approaches to this. So there's like the original Bitcoin approach is just a first price auction, which basically amounts to like everyone just makes a guess about what is the market clearing price. Right? So, so you submit your transaction and you make a guess. This is what I think this is worth, and everyone out there makes a guess, and those with the higher guesses get through. Right? So that's that's how how this works and. That's that's a mechanism that that has worked okay, but the the the, the idea is that this tends to be very vol volatile and people aren't great at estimating. Right? So you might end up uh, overpaying and right? so so uh, that the prices can fluctuate more. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, so so the approach we're using in Falcon and and, uh, and uh, in Ethereum as well is uh, this uh, called the uh, EIP fifteen fifty nine, where the idea is that. So you price gas uh, not just by by the amount everyone voluntarily uh, guesses, but you have a base fee which is set by the network. So this is posted. This is the the base amount of fee that you need to pay for your gas, and you can put something on top which is meant to be just like to cover the marginal costs for the miner to include your your transaction, right? And then this base fee, the idea is that this is now not paid to the to the miner, but this is burned. And this evolves in some 
like definite algorithmic uh, uh, a way with uh, the point being that this is adjusted based on demand on the network. Right? So, uh, so in this case, you allow the block size to be a little bit flexible, but you set a target block size. Right? So, so this is the optimal block size that I want. And if in a given block, I, I spent too much gas, then I raise the price such that the next block will be closer to where I want it to be. Right? So, so this adjust the base fee such that uh, the idea is that this mechanism should equilibrate uh, uh, close enough to the appropriate market clear place. Because these are different options here. But uh, so this is what we are using in Falcon. Uh, uh, so, so one point is that uh, so this price doesn't come from this mechanism. So one of these shouldn't, this EIP-1559 will not make your transactions cheaper or anything. Where, where this price comes from is just from uh, supply and demand. Right? So these are two mechanisms just to try to find out what the price is, but they are not what is used to determine the price. Right? So, so the price is simply uh, uh, just supply. And, so in a fixed blockchain, like like we were talking about with a, with a fix, uh, with a target block uh, size, supply is fixed, right? So this is the amount of gas I have per block. Then, if more people want to use this, if there's more demand, that will lead to a change in the price. Right? So this is basically the the, the kind of a symbolic equation uh, uh, showing the right, the dynamics of. Uh, right? So if there's a change in demand, if demand increases, then I should increase the market clearing price such that I remain at my target uh, uh, block size. And if it's demand reduces, I should reduce the price. So that's the, the idea. Uh, uh, yeah, so one, one question that, 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 that we think about uh, uh, right, as script economists that maybe many engineers think less about is like, do we actually want to decrease the, the market clearing price? Right? So this is a big complaint, okay, uh, uh, gas fees are too expensive and uh, so on. So we could tell the engineers, okay, make it uh, scale everything, make it better, make the blocks larger so we can fit more stuff. And that should uh, give us a lower market clearing price, right? And and that's something like uh, CX described uh, is kind of what happened with this hyperdrive that suddenly we have this boom now. Now, our, now we can process uh, 25x times the, the the amount of gas in the block. And the question is: Is this something we should do? Is this a good deal? Right? Uh, and then we need to think about what is a good deal. Right? And the reason why you you might think uh, so, so yeah, it makes sense okay, but let's make it everything more scale up we can include more stuff but but there's something you're losing by by this calibrity which is you are reducing your your market clearing price right so miners will complain that oh why did you make it so scalable now i'm making less money is the idea right? uh, so yes yeah, so i want to think a bit about uh so i want you to think about this question of what is a uh, what is a good deal for the network? Should I always scale or what should I do? So one, one strictly economic way to, to think about this question is just to think about the, the total network revenue, right? So the idea is that if I increase the supply, the, supply the, the market clearing price will be reduced. So this is bad, right? People are making less money. But the idea is that now more transactions can get processed such that Sure, each one will will cost less, but but there's more uh, being processed, so that's a net good, right? So, so you can think of it. So, what is the does this total network revenue? It's just like what is the the current price um, times the amount of transactions that that you could process, right? So, so if I scale and this gets lowered, but this gets increased enough that overall this is uh, this increases, and that's what I would call a good deal economically. But so, so for instance, this is what didn't happen right away in uh, this hyperdrive that CX talks about. So you scaled everything, the base fees went down and the demand to reach that level that we needed the 25X is, is still uh, working to reach that level. So that's what could be considered a bad deal in this sense. Uh, uh, so you might, you might question like, uh, is this, are we being superficial here that uh, we're just like a good deal is just uh, make more money. But uh, for now we'll leave it okay. So, so this, this 
uh, is something to think about, but that's that's one goal we could use to to work on. But uh, I, I think it's not that superficial in the sense that we're so, so what we want is uh, we want to have a, a, like a healthy and very useful and at, active network. And that involves miners being uh, motivated, right? So, so if the rewards, if the revenue is good and rewards are good, uh, the, the miners will be motivated. There will be more, more miners or storage providers in our case in, in, in Falcon uh, joining. And, uh, they they need to be properly motivating to bring more miners and make it a a good network. So 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 the general principle that I guide myself with is uh, so the supply that we have that we provide by all these scaling solutions should be just appropriate for the level of demand of the network, not like much higher than the demand uh, there currently is. Uh, uh, so. Just a, a little summary here of uh, kind of a typical scaling solution that that that, that we can see in the like in the blockchain space. But it's just like making a a roll up or a side net on the on the. So so, so the idea is that uh, so if you have your main net, your Falcon or your Ethereum or whatever, and this is too expensive to use. You can like make your own little site uh, net where you run uh, run your 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 sub transactions in there. So this is what happens like at an exchange or something. So okay, so so this exchange is gonna make all these transactions and then only at the end report the 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 final result of that to the mainnet, right? And this allows you to do like more transactions, maybe at a faster scale. You can do more things without reporting each one of those. Without using gas on the mainnet for each one of those, right? So you only spend it here, and then report report only the result after after that. And so that has a result. So that that so having many side nets like this could take some some demand away from the mainnet, right? Because these are all transactions that could have been performed on the mainnet, but now they don't need to be performed there. So that's something to to think about. Uh, uh, Right. Uh, one point of, of this is that right, so the sign that you're running your sub transactions in should have a lower market tiering price than the main net. If not, like users will just go back to the original net. Uh, uh, but the trade off is that the main net is expected to be like the, the with the higher security and a better reputation, right? So that's why you want to report back your, 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 your final results to the main net and make them uh, more permanent there. So this is the idea. So the subnets should be cheaper, but less uh, security, less reputation, and so on. So that brings me to this is a uh, uh, this is a project that we're working with. Uh, it's mainly a consensus labs uh, uh, of a, a, a project that. So it's a solution we are working in in Falcon that this could be what scalability looks like for Falcon, which is what they call hierarchical consensus. And the idea is similar to 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 this uh, stuff about about side uh, side nets that I talk about, but uh, just more hierarchical, I guess. Right? So, so the idea is so here you have your main net, which I guess this represents time or something. Right? But anyway, so here you have Filecoin, let's say, and then I, I I have more demand that I can handle here, so I spawn a subnet here. So so, so it's so I can spawn a subnet, and here I process transactions fast, and then I am checkpointing uh, total results back to the mainnet, but not everything that happens here. So similar to the uh, to the side net rollup kind of thing. And so here, this one has two subnets, but then the idea is that when there's too much demand here, also these ones can spawn their own subnets. Right? So, and then these ones again could spawn their own subnets if they want, and so on. So, so this this idea of uh, of hi uh, hierarchy of uh, of nets that how they are connected is basically so. So this uh, this one runs their own uh, sub transactions, and then periodically they post their checkpoints back to the to their parent net. Uh, right, so so this interaction subnets checkpoint back with their parents. So the subnets remove some demand from the parent, but then they also ask for something because they need to spend some gas on checkpointing with the 
So there are checkpoints in gas phase when they checkpoint with the parents. And, and uh, uh, right, so the idea is also that the, the parent chain should provide some level of security and reputation through to the subnets by keeping track of their checkpoints, right? So they're saying, oh, this, this <clears throat> there is some more permanence to these transactions. And also there will be uh, collaterals uh, that can be slashed <coughs> to, uh, to start running this net. So, so, so you can say, okay, so I wanna start a subnet. If I wanna start an official subnet with this parent, I need to freeze some, <coughs> Some amount of collateral that may be slashed by the parent if uh, I do something bad. Right. That's the idea of hierarchical consensus. Sorry. <coughs> right. <coughs> right. So the idea is so now the, the hierarchy is is limitless in principle. So I can keep spawning more sumness whenever I need it. There's no supply problem anymore. All scalability is solved, right? So that's, uh, that's the idea of this. So I grow the the hierarchy grows as needed, uh, and then uh, uh, right. So, so if I'm a, a parent chain that have my own subnets, I can kind of pull on them if I feel so. I, I have some controls over my ch uh, children nets by their checkpointing fees that I charge them and by the collaterals. So I say, oh, if you want to start a subnet under me. You have to pay a higher collateral. So, so, if these fees are high, it could discourage the creation and survival of such subnets, right? So, so I make it things too expensive for the subnets to to survive. Or if I want to spawn a lot of new subnets to take care of all this demand, then I make these things cheap, and they and they can join. Right? And then the idea is that while the whole hierarchy is limitless, is there's no uh, there's no scarcity anymore. Each of the nets in the hierarchy is a finite net that each each of them should be utilized optimally. And then kind of the guiding principle we want to use is that the overall total network revenue of the whole hierarchy should be maximized. So growing this hierarchy should be in the name of it being better for the whole hierarchy. So that's the, the idea. Yeah. Uh, right, so... so we can think of the model here. What what we can do about this? So this is the traditional model I, I I told you about about like a single chain that more demand brings higher prices. And this is kind of how how this works in fifteen fifty nine. That this is the market clearing price is adjusted by depending if the block size was bigger than the target block size, and I increase the price and so on. So this is so this is this dynamic for the this simple case and. What we're looking at now looks more something like this. Right? So this is for a given uh, chain, for a given net in the hierarchy. So these are kind of the, the knobs that you have here. You have your, your base fee, your normal gas fees that you charge for transactions. You have your checkpoint in fees and you have your collaterals. And you should adjust this, these fees based on what's happening with the hierarchy. So this is the data that you read to to make your choice uh, here to, how to adjust this right so this is kind of the solution space i was talking about right so uh right so so each of these uh, nets must keep their right? so they have an individual goal of like keeping the optimal block size for myself for that one given net right? so there can be a eip 1559 like mechanism uh but then also they should have in mind like what's happening with the whole network. So it's a collective goal. So, okay, the total network revenue is increasing. And if that happened, because I see that more, so this is the total amount of gas being spent in the network. If more gas was, was burned in the network and that was good for the revenue, then I want to incentivize that more. So I would make these fees, uh, checkpointing and collaterals lower right, to invite more growth. And if growth was bad, then I want to pull back. So this is kind of the idea. And yeah, so you can, uh, yeah. so this is the main picture here. And and this is not the main, the solution because we still, I'm not showing you like an exact formula like this, how to play, but there's many options of what we could do that will look like this, but this is, uh, should come from something like this. So. Yeah, so this is my final answer. So how large should the hierarchy grow? So 
it should be large enough and maybe a bit larger to maybe induce a bit more demand, but it shouldn't be larger than it needs to be. And that's about all I have to say. Great, thanks for that, Axel. And I think we have time for a couple of questions actually to the speaker. Um, and so we'll do this Oprah style. If you raise your hand, I will come at you with the mic. Or I will lead with my own question. Uh, you mentioned that subnet's inherent reputation and security features from the main net are, is the reputation and security features of the subnets, are they strictly dependent on the mainnet? Is there any way for subnets to compete on features other than price? If you start uh, a subnet without a right, so, so but I, what I mean by this borrowing of reputation is just that you check points, so you have a level of permanence that you know, okay, so the users of this subnet knows there's something more permanent happening in the parent net. And also that, that, you, that you know this subnet paid some collateral that can be slashed if they misbehave, so you know they're motivated to behave. Uh, it could also become, the subnet could become more valuable than that by providing a valuable service. Right? So you also, that subnet becomes a good subnet that is doing something good, people wanna use it. So, so this is kind of a minimum value that you know that the user knows the subnet will have but the subnet can grow even above this value so yeah fantastic thanks again axel uh one more question over here i'm thinking about like the collective goal of maximizing the revenue of the network and right. wondering if there's any ambiguity and like how to measure that either what the elements mm -hmm. of the network are not just miners and well, computers, but humans, and like how you measure revenue. Is it only in Filecoin, or are there other currencies? Right. So, so this, this, this. I guess this comes back to the question of the superficial goal or not. So, so, uh, so the the idea here is kind of. I'm assuming so. Uh, right. So the different subnets can actually do different tasks. Right. So let's say we have Filecoin, that is about uh, storage, and then. Right, so you 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 make a subnet that is focused on retrieval market and you're incentivizing people who retrieve files and so on. They're doing different things, but they have kind of what joined them, what what we can measure them equally with is the amount of gas that they spent. Right, so so, uh, so it's just like on the computational power required for for each of these things. So we are assuming that the computational power of all of them can be measured and compared. And uh, yeah, so this is one simple goal, which is, uh, okay, so, so this is my definition, but now kind of, so now in the hierarchy version, this would be a sum of these guys over all the subnets in the hierarchy. So what is the market clearing price of each of them and the block size of each of them? Uh, yeah, so, so it, this is again, like a very cold economic target but it's one to, to work with, uh, could be, yeah, it's, it's, it's also open to maybe this is not the right target. Okay. 